Here we have a dogfish shark, a very um, common species used for these types of dissections. Adults can get up to about three feet long. Uh, male, uh, females are a little bit larger than males typically. This one is a fema female actually. Um, males would have distinct claspers on them on the pelvic fins right down here. We don't see that. So let's talk about external morphology. We've got happy little shark right here. And you may notice that your, your tail has been cut. This is so that they, they can inject it with formalin. Um, so don't worry about that too much. I'm just gonna go ahead and chop that off so I can fit everything on here better. But what do you notice about this tail? It is heterocircle. So this is the, the caudal fin, this is the dorsal lobe, this is the ventral lobe. So we have a, a much larger dorsal lobe of the caudal fin than ventral. And you can see that the, uh, the tail actually extends into the dorsal lobe. So dorsal, ventral lobe, caudal fin, heterocircle tail. And if you look in here, you can see their um, blood vessel and their cord. This is a, it's not a backbone, but it is a cartilaginous backbone of sorts. So like uh, similar to the notochord of early vertebrates. And we can see these other fins here. We have the anterior dorsal fin and the posterior dorsal fin. You will notice that both of these are kind of clipped because oftentimes these come with spines for protection. So there's a little spine here and a spine here. And um, then we have pectoral fins and pelvic fins. So those are the fins, make sure you know the fins. Anterior dorsal fin, posterior dorsal fin, pelvic fins, I mean pectoral fins, um, pelvic fins, and the pelvic fins on males would have two claspers there. And then if we look here, we're going to have an, um, an eye. Nice, right? Here is the spiracle. The spiracle brings in oxygen to the um, shark when its mouth is full. So typically, uh, water and oxygen is going to flow through here and then out their gills right here, these gill slits right here. But when their mouth is full of chomp and food, the spiracle is going to do that very important function. Anterior to the eyes, we have the rostrum. So all this is the rostrum. The rostrum is very important for sensory. We have some nostrils right in here. And you probably won't be able to see it on the video, but if we look closely at your specimen, you're going to see little tiny holes dotting all along the rostrum. These are the ampullae of Lorenzini, and the, which are used for detecting electrical um, currents from its prey. Speaking of special sensory organs along the side here, you're going to see a lateral line system. And um, it's going to be right along here. It's not really very obvious, but it's right along here on the lateral side. And the lateral line system is um, used for detecting vibrations underwater. So we got rostrum, we got eyes, we got spiracle, we got ampullae of Lorenzini, um, which by the way, if I have a pin right here, I'm wanting ampullae of Lorenzini, not rostrum. If I have pin up here, then you can say rostrum. So spiracle, rostrum, ampullae of Lorenzini, nostrils, um, nice bitey teeth for chomping. We've got gills, pectoral fins, pelvic fins, anterior dorsal, posterior dorsal, caudal fin. You will also notice that it's dark on top and light on the bottom. This is a pretty cool feature called counter current shading. So if you imagine this, uh, the shark swimming around in the ocean, if you're a predator looking down, you're going to see the deep, dark ocean beneath you. And um, so you're going to see a dark dorsa <clears throat> in a dark uh, background. So this is camouflaged. And the other side, if you're a predator looking up toward the lighter, um, shallower water, you're going to see a light ventral side against a white background. So this countercurrent shading is camouflaged from both the top and the bottom, which is pretty awesome. You'll also notice that there's no bone. 
It's very flexible, which is pretty cool. It's a good little swimmer. And you'll notice that if you run your hand um, across the grain, it will feel very rough, like sandpaper, because of the, the placoid scales, which are made of dentine from the dermis and then um, enamel from the epidermis, which is the same thing as your teeth are made of. And in fact, the teeth of sharks are modified placoid scales. Hooray! Modified placoid scales! All right, let's chop this guy open and see what he's like on the inside. To do this, um, I find it helpful to get rid of the fins. So, sorry buddy. We're gonna slice through your fins. And we're gonna slice through this fin here, just kind of get them out of the way. Sharks have tough skin and there's gonna be a layer of muscle um, underneath the skin, so don't be, don't be shy, you just gotta go for it. At the same time, you don't want to go too deep because that will um, mess up the organs. So eventually what we want to do, we want to see all the insides, and these are always in a variable state of smashedness. So what we want to do is um, the heart, oh, you can kind of feel squishy, 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 and then there's a hard part right here. This is going to be the sternum, and the sternum can be pretty tough to, to break. Um, it's made of cartilage, not bone, but still pretty tough to get to. But the heart is above the sternum, so we want to make sure we see the heart. So we're going to kind of start here below the below the jawbone, and then we're going to cut down along the side of either side, down to the cloaca. And the cloaca, I should point out, is the common hole right here reproductive and uh, waste products excreted from there. So eventually what you're going to do is just going to cut along the edge here on either side down like this so you can kind of remove the ventral side and your left, you want to make sure you get north anterior enough that you're cutting through the, the cartilaginous sternum right here so you can see the pericardial cavity right here which house, houses the, the scrumptious heart right in there. And now we're ready to kind of see all these organs, so we can kind of just plop them out. You see a nice membrane down here that connects everything back to the um, dorsal side. Just cut through that. The most obvious organ in here are the livers. You have very, very large livers right here. And the livers produce squalene, which is how, which is a very oil, oily substance. This oil is um, just gets everywhere. Everything will be, be very smelly and very oily. And um, this oil helps them float. So the livers are tremendously large because they produce a lot of oil. The livers also um, produce bile, which is helpful for digesting lipids. So bile di um, uh, breaks down lipids. And you can see right here, we have the the left lobe, the right lobe, and the medial lobe, or median lobe, middle lobe of the liver. And right along side of the median lobe, you're going to have kind of a, um, a balloon, clear balloon-like thing. Sometimes it's greenish colored. This is the gallbladder. The gallbladder is what stores the bile that's produced in the liver. So bile is produced in the liver, stored in the gallbladder. And then the gallbladder is going to um, send the bile via this bile duct to the duodenum, which we'll get to in a minute. So eventually the bile does its work digesting lipids in the duodenum. <clears throat> but we'll start up here. We have the, the heart, and really all I want you to just, uh, just call this the ventricle. The atria are kind of in the back, but they're difficult to distinguish. So if I po I'm pointing here, just say ventricle, and its job is to pump blood, um, oxygenated blood, throughout the body. And then when I say uh, liver lobes, I want you to specify right versus left versus uh, median. And then the gallbladder alongside the median lobe and the bile duct. The stomach we see right here is kind of J-shaped. So if you if you look at that, it's, um, it's J-shaped. The, that's the whole stomach. So the stomach is going to, um, it actually looks like this is part of the esophagus, and this is the stomach. Um, there's a weird constriction here. I'm not, that's kind of unusual. I'm not sure what that is. 
It might just be this little creature's unique gift, um, but it might mean that this esophagus is full of food. We'll uh, split that open and see in a minute. <clears throat> but I want to point out the, the stomach, J-shaped stomach. Right at the kind of apex of the J, you have a gray organ right here. This is the spleen, and the spleen is important for recycling red blood cells and for producing an immune response. Most of these organs do several different things. We're, uh, so I'm just gonna give you one or two kind of primary functions um, for simplicity. And then we have the digestive system. So stomach, spleen, um, you're gonna have the pancreas. This is not a good specimen to talk about the pancreas. So I will not talk about the pancreas on this one. The pancreas is gonna be here. Um, this is the duodenum, so the very first part of the intestine is the duodenum, and then the next part is the ileum. So the duodenum is going to occur right after the pyloric sphincter of the stomach. So stomach, um, duodenum, the pancreas is going to be lying right on top of the duodenum. The bile duct and the pancreas and the spleen all send digestive um, uh, materials to the duodenum. So most of the Nutrient absorption is going to occur in the ileum after you get all the digestive materials from the, um, the bile duct, from the gallbladder, from the spleen, and from the pancreas. And then this is the ileum. Uh, way back in here, we have a strange little thing right here. What is this little guy? This is the rectal gland, and this is for regulating ions. So this is osmoregulation purposes. This is a female, so we should be seeing... Um, Female reproductive organs, they're, this one's immature though, so not much going on. Um, the reproductive organs are going to begin up here, and this is the immature ovaries. Very immature, not much is going on there. Um, oftentimes that will fill the entire cavity down here, and you'll end up with little juvenile sharks down here, and um, very large um, egg yolks and eggs as you go up here. So let's look um, inside some things. If you, let's go ahead and remove the liver. Remove the liver there. Let's remove the stomach. And inside the stomach, we may see something interesting. You never know with stomachs. So I mentioned this constriction that I'm not really sure what that's about. Let's see if we can figure that out. Inside here, you're going to see lots of folds. These folds are called rugi. So all these little folds are rugi. They help to increase surface area and help mash up the food mechanically. So that constriction, you can see that constriction occurs. Uh, there's a difference here between this part and this part, so it looks a little bit different, but I'm not sure why. So you don't have to know why either. So it looks like the the rugi are mostly on the anterior portion, and then the, the posterior portion of the stomach has less rugi. And then um, the duodenum, and then the ileum here. The ileum is worth looking into as well, because in, in other vertebrates, in humans, the ileum, or the small intestine is very long, right? It's, it's, it's wrapped all, all the way around everything. Lots of, it's, it's very, very long. But in sharks, it's very short. But you still want to absorb as much nutrients as possible. So in sharks, they have something called an ilia, um, a spiral valve in their ileum. And so food actually spirals down um, their ileum, which slows it down and maximizes nutrient absorption. That's pretty much it. Liver, heart, stomach, spleen, duodenum, um, ileum, spiral valve, rugi. Uh, let me find another shark and try to find you a better example of the pancreas. So here's another female shark. We can tell that. I cut off the pelvic fins, but you can, um, you can see that there's no claspers on the pelvic fins. So this is another female. You can see the heart up here with the, um, the ventricle and then the atria are on either side. So on this specimen, you should be able to differentiate the, the ventricle from the atria um, pretty nicely. So we have the, the atria here and then the ventricles on either side. I mean, the, 
the ventricles, this gray part on top, the atria are these blacker, darker spots. The atria receive um, deoxygenated blood from the body, and then the ventricle pumps oxygenated blood back out to the body. They, it gets oxygenated through the gills, right? Actually, I don't think I showed you this on the last one. But if you cut up through here, you can see the gills, which are pretty cool. So these are the gills, very feathery, lots of surface area. And then we have the, the right lobe of the liver and the left lobe and the median lobe. And right along the side here, we're going to have the gallbladder and the bile ducts. And then up here, we have a little bit more. So these are the ovaries. A little bit more mature than the last one, still um, don't, don't have any eggs or juvenile sharks, but this is the, these are the ovaries here and then um, here. And, and then the last thing, just, let's do stomach. Stomach is a J, and then the spleen is this dark gray part, and here we have a good pancreas. So the pancreas is going to have a ventral lobe, which is going to remember this is the ventral side and this is the dorsal side. So if you see this, this tan thing right here, in context, this is the J shape of the stomach. The pyloric sphincter is right here. So this section right here is the duodenum. Um, on top of the duodenum lies the ventral lobe of the pancreas. So it's this lighter tan um, kind of granular tissue right here. This is the, the ventral lobe of the pancreas. The dorsal lobe, if you kind of flip this over, what you see is a nice thick membrane which you can cut through and peel back and well look at all that look at all that membrane what I'm wanting you to see is right here this little guy right here is the, the dorsal lobe of the pancreas so we can find it looking this way too just uh, peel back the spleen so again stomach spleen ventral lobe of the pancreas peel this back, you see another thing that looks very similar in color and texture. This is the dorsal lobe of the pancreas. So ventral lobe, dorsal lobe, the pancreas regulates um, sugar levels, uh, glucose levels in the blood, and also sends some digestive um, enzymes to the duodenum, which is right here. And then we have the ileum with the spiral valve in there. We have the rectal gland, which is for um, uh, osmoregulation. So this is uh, this one's a good one, like pretty good specimen. We can see the the ventricles and atria up here. So I'm gonna take a picture of all of all this stuff. At the body, you can see the the livers. You can see the um, the rectal gland. You can see the gallbladder along the side of the median lobe of the liver. You can see the the ovary, one of the ovary, one of the ovaries, the spleen, the stomach with the rugae inside the dorsal lobe of the pancreas, ventral lobe of the pancreas, the duodenum, the ileum with a spiral valve, and then the kidneys are actually back behind everything. Um, this dark kind of, uh, this dark part right there that runs along the right backbone, those are the kidneys. And then the heart um, right in here.